What's great about worship music and songs like this is it does focus our minds on Christ. Yeah. What I love about the chorus of this song, you know, it just says, who else is worthy? Who else is worthy? There is no one, only Jesus. I think it's a statement that just kind of cuts through a lot of stresses and things we could be thinking about or plans that we have. And it just asks the question, is this worthy of the Lord? Yeah. Who else is worthy? Welcome to Hope Talks. We're your hosts. I'm Haley Scully, along with Dustin Anderson, and we want to give you every reason for hope for every challenge in life, because hope means everything. Okay, Haley. Today we have a little bit different of an episode. Uh, At Hope for the Heart, you know, we have over 100 topics in our Keys for Living library, most of the podcast, we're talking through one of those topics. Mm-hmm. So we've talked through forgiveness and perfectionism and guilt and shame and, you know, all kinds of things so Anger far. Anger and lo- yeah. Yeah. yeah, lots of topics. But today, we're talking through a song and a bit of a... It's because you want me to sing, it's, right? Uh, it's yeah. because you've been singing. And mm-hmm. so we're just going to take an episode <laughs> and we're just going to let you sing. And I'll just no, now I'm not going to be able sing. to. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you share that we have a staff devotional every Wednesday mm-hmm. and you lead us very well in that. Thank so you. thank you for doing that. Mm-hmm. But you shared one uh, about two weeks ago uh, based on the song, Who Else? by Gateway uh, Worship. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, I thought it was very encouraging, very inspiring, and it brought to mind a lot of scriptures and a lot of ideas. And uh, I think it was just something that resonated with me. It seemed to resonate with the staff. So I wanted to talk through that song, the the ideas in it, some of the scriptures that kind of, you know, lay the foundation for the lyrics and what the song's about. So it's essentially about... The chorus uh, goes, who else is worthy? There is no one, only Jesus. Yeah. And so why don't you kick us off? Where did you hear that song initially? Why has it resonated with you for a while? What's, you know, why has that song kind of been on your heart and in your life lately? Well, I I am that kind of person that I will hear a song and then I'll listen to it for like two months straight without ever hearing anything else. So I might, I I might be a little bit weird in that. Yeah. You know, I've said that, that music moves me um, without trying to sound overly cheesy or whatever, but music calms me Mm. when I travel. I've talked about, you know, having some fear of flying at times, listening to worship music really grounds me and centers me. Um, and so I had heard this song, Who Else? Um, I've been attending the Heights Church in Richardson here, mm-hmm. and um, they sang it one Sunday. And then the next Sunday, I was home in Oklahoma City with my family, and they sang it. And I'm like, okay. it's coming at me from every direction. <laughs> so um, I really liked the melody of it. So I, li- mm-hmm. I looked it up, and um, and then it really clicked. I'll, I'm just going to – I'm not going to sing – I don't. Okay. 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 Cause now it's going to be awkward now that I've like, I get to sing this time. So now I'm going to try not to, but anyways, uh, so it was, I am an instrument of exaltation and I was born to lift the name above all names. You hear the melody of all creation, but there's a song of praise that only I can bring. And so I'll get into why I really, I don't know why that connected, but I've been listening to it on repeat Mm. now for probably over a month. So when we have the focus and it was my turn to share, you know, we all kind of take turns at different times. I always want to just be, what is, like you've said that before in a previous episode, like what is God doing right now? Yeah. And we are headed into the conference. We were headed into all the preparations and everything that we're trying to do. And so this idea of why do we do everything that we're doing? Why do we, why are we trying this ministry? Why are we doing hope talks? What is yeah. our mission? And so the idea of persevering and doing our best and trying our best because who else is worthy? Yeah. You know, that really connected with me. And and then the line of you hear the melody of all creation, yet there's a song of praise that only I can bring. That kind of gutted me. Like in a good way, like the good, I don't know if, but the good gutted, <laughs> but, um, and that's what yeah. I wanted to, to share. And I yeah. kind of let out with, um, I remember when I was in high school and 
my cousin Ryan, she and I are a year apart, and she mm-hmm. always wanted me to listen to like her new Point of Grace tape. And at the time, yeah. at the time, I was way more into like Brooks and Dunn and Clay <laughs> Walker, and so I would be like, "Oh my gosh, don't make me listen to this," yeah. which I grew to love. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, you know, I I let out the focus with that because, like, sorry, I'm getting ready to make you guys listen to my favorite song. It may not be your <laughs> cup of tea, but listen to it anyways, because that was just so moving to me that there. In the work that I get to do, and that's yeah. we, yeah. but in the work that we all get to do, there's a song of praise that only I can sing. And yeah. the thought that God is listening for my yeah. praise was, that's what just kind of took me out. Yeah. stuck out to you. Yeah. So preparing for this conference, preparing for everything that we were trying to be doing, that was something like, this is my song of praise and yeah. he's listening for it. So. Yeah. Well, I do want to get into the lyrics a little bit, but mm-hmm. I just want to say up front, like, I think it's good to sometimes pause and think through some of the some of the songs we sing because we, you know, might show up on Sunday. We don't pick the worship songs. Right. Just kind of, we just kind of receive them and we learn them. And sometimes we don't, we're not actively thinking through the lyrics. Yeah. We might in the moment, but it's it's not often that outside of that time of worship we're 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 thinking of it so i think it's good to pause and do this every once in a while with certain songs because they do resonate with us they do Mm -hmm. music has a way of centering us it teaches us as much about god as actual teaching and preaching can do Mm -hmm. so music is can be very instructive and it forms a lot of our theology Mm -hmm. so when you think about grace you might think of oh we're saved by grace God is gracious. But what might come to mind for a lot of people is the song Amazing Grace. Do you want me to sing it? You want me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Keep yeah, going. Just... Sing amongst yourselves. The, and, the, and the theme of, you know, the the story in that song of I was, I was blind and now I see and I was lost. And, you know, so music can be a, something that is very instructive and forms actually a lot of our, our thoughts about God. So, yeah. and especially, I think it's good to, pause especially on songs like this where it really is about lifting up the name of jesus and and really focusing your thoughts on him so the opening verse i'll read it again okay um i wanted to get into that uh so it says again i'm an instrument of exaltation i was born to lift up the name above all names you hear the melody of all creation there's a song of praise that only Mm -hmm. i can bring so it's playing in your head Mm -hmm. isn't it yeah and so two ideas there, um, instrument of exaltation, I was born to lift up the name above all names. So I think that's getting at the idea of we're born to praise God. Yeah. It's all about our relationship with him, and that's why we we're created. So we've been going through the book of Colossians in my church, mm-hmm. um, and there's that great passage in Colossians 1 where it talks about Jesus. He's the image of God, the firstborn over all creation. By him, all things were created. And it says, all things were created through him and for him. And so it's just that very clear statement of like, we're created for God. Yeah. And so it's just, I think the way this song starts out, it's just, and the chorus as well of who else is worthy. It has a way of just like reminding us of like the first importance of like what we're made for and what we're created for. And I think... Like we've said, it it centers us and, you know, it doesn't have to be this song for other people. I think the the concept that we're trying to get at is all things are created for God's yeah. glory, Yeah, you know, and sometimes people will look at a mountain, they'll look at an ocean, they'll look at their child, mm. will look at a sunset. There are so many things that because we're created to worship and adore him, that yeah. is the fulfillment. You know, if you've got a fiddle, or for some people, a violin, If you, yeah. <laughs> but if you've got a fiddle, uh, playing it is what brings it to life. It yeah. was made to make right. a melody. And our lungs, our bodies, we are yeah. made to worship mm-hmm. him. So even thinking about... You know, music being a part of our worship and our fulfillment. And I just want to take a moment to give a shout out to Jubal. 
I know that's so lame, but one of my favorite things. Remind us of who Jubal is. <laughs> so Jubal <laughs> is mentioned one time in scripture. In Gen- I wrote it down, Genesis okay. 4, 21. And he is listed as the father of music. Yeah. He is the one, you know. I, I think it's uh, those who, I looked it up to yesterday. Yeah. You <laughs> I know. I'm like on the, the Jubal campaign. Of, uh, uh, stringed instruments and uh, like And like, I think of piccolos, wind and string instruments, like some of the first instruments, but he's considered like the father of music because that's what we see in scripture. We see the beginning of all things, of the, of the builders, of the musicians, of the leaders, of the, the Levites who were the priests. Like we see the beginning of all humanity and God putting gifts to bring humanity to life in through different people. And in scripture, he mentions their names. So to me, like when he mentions Jubal, I'm like, yes, like that is a dot connector to me. So shout out to Jubal. Jubal. Like, I don't know if in heaven he gets to hear any of that. I don't know how that works, but we are made to worship and praise. And I think that when we recognize that and we can see how music affects us. Yeah. And not only it affects us, but it's it's talked about and affirmed in scripture. Yeah. So everything that we experience as humans is really affirmed in his word. And so, you know, I just think that I am an instrument of exaltation and I was born to lift the name above all names. Yeah. Uh I can relate to that. And it brings me strength and it brings me joy. And then thinking of him hearing the melody of all creation and listening for my praise and even listening for my hurts because he's a father, you know, so it's, it's the creator listening for my praise and the father listening for my heart. It's that kind of thing that just, it takes me out. Yeah. It totally takes me out. Yeah. No, I love the, the juxtaposition that the opening verse has because it says you hear the melody of all creation and there's a song of praise that only i can bring only me that uh i'll just read there's a few verses i wanted to share they're a little bit long so it'll take a minute these are the scriptures that came to mind as you were talking through it in the devotional but especially this part um so revelation 5 uh 9 through 13 and by the way i I put all of the scripture references in the description for those listening. Yeah. Um, so if you're ever listening and missed a reference or something, you can look in the notes and find the reference. So I do that for every episode. Um, but Revelation 5, 9 through 13, it says, And they sang a new song. This is a, it's a vision of heaven. Mm-hmm. It says, They sang a new song saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals because you were slain. And with your blood, you purchase for God persons from persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. You made them to be a kingdom and priest to serve our God, and they will reign on the earth. Then I looked and I heard a loud voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands and 10,000 times 10,000. So a lot. A lot. A lot. Yeah. They circled, they encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders in a loud voice. They were saying, Worthy is the Lamb who is who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature, as if the tenth of tens of thousands of thousands was not enough. Uh-huh. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them saying, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. Uh. What? <laughs> image of like when it says you know you hear the melody of all creation that's it right there yeah all the angels all of it all everything i love that just in heaven on earth under the earth and on the scene all that's like just just over the top scriptures saying everything is praising god everything yeah. is praising jesus and even the rocks will cry yeah, out cry yeah. out if we don't yeah yeah and so but then the, the juxtaposition of that he's hearing the praise from just the billions and billions of creatures and people and angels yeah to psalm 40 verse 1 through 3 i waited patiently for the lord and he turned to me and heard my cry 
He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock, and he gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. So that's just one person. Yeah. That God saved them, lifted them out of the pit, out of the mud, and put a new song in their mouth. So the idea that just one person praising God, that we each have a song. Right. Um, that only we can sing, I think is... And he did it. Yeah. He did it. He gave some of us incredible voices. I'm saying us, but I'm not really counting myself in the incredible voice. sing a joyful noise. A joyful noise. Not a... Yeah. I'm thinking when I was a little girl, music was always a big part of my family. I remember on Christmas Eve at my mom's side of the family, we listened to the Oak Ridge Boys Christmas and... Mm -hmm. um, the Statler Brothers Christmas, and my grandma and my Aunt Carla and I sang harmony. I thought I was really good. I was learning harmony. Um, but I can hear us sitting around singing and and praising and worshiping at our family reunions. At one of my family reunions, uh, Uncle Lloyd played the fiddle. Dickie played the steel guitar. Like, we had, you know, just family. <laughs> I was going to say, when you mentioned fiddle before, there's yeah. <laughs> there's some family member who's... There, yeah, we did. And just the joy and the unity and the connection that music can bring. So I think, you know, because so many of us do recognize the power and the influence of music in our lives, connecting that back to the very real understanding of God gave us that and what a blessing that is is, um, you know, just something fun to think through. One of the things that, that we kind of shared, too, is what does that look like? One of the techniques that we use in counseling a lot mm. would be a timeline, you know, because in counseling, we're trying to help people think through um, some unresolved hurt and how can we kind of safely go back and check on those things. And so a oh. timeline is a way that they can tell their story when it's kind of hard to think through our story. So I just, I encouraged our staff to think about like, what's your timeline of praise? Yeah. You know, maybe in your quiet time, thinking back through different times in your life, because it, it, you know, we can go back to, well, they hurt me and that yeah. was a hard time. But what were some of our timelines of praise? And I know for me, that has been a, a really encouraging exercise because I yeah. can tend to rehearse the hurt. Yeah. But what if we were rehearsing the praise moments and the praise yeah. points? And then when we sing and and it inspires us and it fills our lungs and fills our guts that we are really bring into mind that yes. he is worthy of our praise. He is everything. So that is a great motivator Yeah, as we are working hard and as we're doing things and as we're worshiping and praising who else is worthy? Yeah. Ain't nobody. I'll say ain't. I'll get <laughs> well, serious think, about it. Yeah, I think the idea of a timeline struck a chord with me, too, uh, on the Devo, because uh, I've done that exercise. We had to do that in um, seminary, where we mm -hmm. had to, like, I mean, th this took a couple of weeks to actually go through, where we had to share our life story with, like, a small group. Mm -hmm. And, but, I mean... Practically, what that meant is we had to literally break down our life in like, you know, I did like zero through 10, just early childhood mm -hmm. and then kind of teenage years, what was going on in my life. And then, you know, college, marriage just kind of went through, just broke my life down in like seven sections or something. Mm -hmm. And then during that and then in each one, you're kind of just identifying like what happened to me? Like what what was my relationship with God like during that time? What was I learning about him? And what did what did the Lord teach me or bring me out of or reveal to me and during those mm -hmm. times? And it was a really healthy exercise for everyone because it actually like put kind of like uh what's what's the word I want to say? Ebenezer stones. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> There's a song yeah. here. I lay my Ebenezer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The memory stones of yeah. just like, the, you know, so when I think now back to my childhood, I can think of like, I grew up with, you know, a mom who struggled with alcohol and there was, mm -hmm. she battled cancer for a few years. And, you know, I can think of the very difficult things I went through, but I can also think of how 
my my brother cared for me. Yeah. And my dad was there for me. And there were still a lot of sweet moments with my mom. And the Lord was still revealing himself to me through those things. Right. And we still went to church and there was I was still learning about God. So there is still praise moments yeah. in those things. So But this I call to mind. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, the idea of a timeline I think was a helpful thing to think through. You know, just what what are those kind of praise moments throughout your life? I had a a huffy bicycle. Huffy. It was pink. Solid. It had a basket. That would be one of my praise points. You mentioned one to 10. You know, I just, I think that we've gotten into this cycle and circle of a lot of self-reflection over the years. There's a lot of self-help. How do I improve? How do I do this? How do I, you know, and and sometimes that introspection leads to a focus on yeah. the the difficult and the hard things yeah. you know and when we when we practice remembering all the hard things well i came through this or i went through that or yeah. you know it, th- those are true stories it's not a denial yeah. of what yeah. the hard things were but how do we turn a focus as paul would say in philippians 4 8 and 9 yeah to what is true what is lovely, yeah. what is pure, what is worthy of praise. Yeah. And there are certainly things that are worthy of lament, and there are certainly things that are worthy yeah. of um, needing healing. I said worthy, but just needing healing. Mm-hmm. But how do we go back and remember that if you turn on George Strait's Pure Country, <laughs> I am right back in 1994. Yeah headed to the K County State Fair with my friend, practicing the lyrics. Like yeah. music takes us to places yeah. and music and yeah. lyrics will take our our souls and our spirits and our emotions to different places. And so this song in particular, you know, was one that was just impacting me. And I and I think that's another thing about why it's it is important to what are we listening to? Yeah. You know, what what is what are we putting into our ears and into our yeah. spirit and into our mind? And I think that that is an important thing. What are you letting your kids listen to? And it's not about like removing everything, every yeah. dangerous thing. We've got to learn through that. Yeah. You know, we've got to figure out what is safe for us and what is safe for our kids. And if we just make every, if we put ourselves in a padded cell, <laughs> then where there's yeah. nothing that can, you know, yeah. Um, that's not the point either, yeah. but it is paying attention to ourselves. We're talking about hope. We're talking about well-being a lot. Yeah. Pay attention to how things impact yeah. our spirits and how things impact our soul. And for me, worship music is, you know, yeah. the it business. Does, yeah, it does change the atmosphere of the room. Yeah. By the way, for me, it would be, it's not George Strait, it would be Elvis. Oh, <laughs> my dad is really big into Elvis. Uh, okay. So when I need to like go back and remember, it's it's going to be Elvis. It's going to uh, be especially Elvis. Elvis gospel music. Oh, it don't. Has the, I had the three yeah. CD set of his gospel music. Joshua fit the battle around Jericho. I'll sing it right now. I'm not going to sing it right now, but yeah, Elvis gospel. Yeah, that was one of my and Carla's very favorites yeah. too. I but <laughs> but with this song and with many uh, songs, I, yeah, it's that idea of where is the music taking. Taking you, is right. it taking you to a, a a place that's just making you really like emotional or tune out or what is it? And I think what what's great about worship music and songs like this is it does focus our minds on Christ, yeah, um, and and His worthiness. And I think what I love about the chorus of this song, you know, it just says, who else is worthy? Who else is worthy? There is no one, only Jesus. I think it's a statement that just kind of cuts through a lot of stresses and things we could be thinking about or plans that we have. And it just asks the question, is this worthy of the Lord? Yeah. Who else is worthy? I think it's a, I, I remember after you shared that devotion, it just left me feeling kind of like grounded because it was like, what is all of this about? Mm-hmm. Why do we? Why did we start a podcast? Why are we yeah. doing the conference? Why? Why? Do, why? Why should parents continue to persevere with their kids? Why right. should marriages? You know, why should spouses be stay committed to each other? Mm-hmm. You know, all of these different situations where 
a lot of times we're going to be exhausted by the thing itself. Yeah. Work will get tiring. Like parenting, marriage, relationships, we do go through periods of, of brokenness and things like that. Yeah. So we can't look to the to the job or to the relationship in and of itself yeah. as like, this is where my hope is. When we look to Jesus and ask, is this, is this worthy? And remember that he, he came for us. Yeah. <laughs> he, he lived the life we should have lived. He died for us. He rose for us. Like he gives us eternal life. Like what, like when you consider all that God has done for us in Christ, it has that way of just grounding you and going. Yeah. This is why. He's why. Yeah. That was one of the things that, like, for me in particular, shared. I live away from my family. Yeah. I am here for what I consider and believe to be my calling. Mm -hmm. But also what that means is I don't live near my parents. I don't live. My my brother was actually in a car wreck yesterday. He's okay. But those moments— we really stop and reflect on where we are, what we're doing. It's both storylines are true, okay? Mm -hmm. I live away from my family. And a lot of people would say, even as a single woman, I should be, but you know, what my roles are and all that kind of stuff. I live away from my family. I have shared before, I used to be so scared to travel. I wouldn't go anywhere, but I went wherever he called me to go. Mm -hmm. I could look at all of that rationally and get bitter in that because if i'm if i'm focused on myself my desire would be to be near my family my desire would be to not necessarily be on a 17 hour plane ride at yeah. different times you know um but when i look and i say i believe christ i believe the word of god i believe that jubal was the father of music and how music fills my soul and how all of that connects and it all none of it contradicts it yeah. what we experience today and what his word was you know thousands of years ago when i look at that and i say i believe and i choose to follow jesus that's why yeah. i can be here and i can go where i need to go it's not a denial like oh i'm glad it's both and when i focus on christ and when i focus on the things that lift my spirit and my soul yeah. um those are the things that i can that empower me yeah. instead of make me feel you know down or overwhelmed yeah. and again it's not a denial it is a choice it is a choice to focus on what brings me life and joy yeah. as opposed to a focus on what is lost. There's a few verses that come to mind. Hebrews 12. This was a memory verse for my kids this summer. Okay. We're surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses. Let us throw off every sin and weight that entangles. Mm -hmm. Looking to Jesus, who for the joy set before him, or some translations say, fixing your eyes on Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then there's... Uh, I'll have to find the address, but there's a verse in Hebrews as well. I think it's like Hebrews 3 where it just says, consider Jesus. Mm. And it talks about what he did for us. Mm -hmm. and I love the short little phrase of that. And then there's another one in, um, I wanted, I'll want i have to look it up again, but it's in like First Timothy or something where it says, remember Jesus Christ, descended from David, risen from the dead, where it's just this like, Consider Jesus, yeah. fix your eyes on Jesus, remember Jesus Turn Christ. And like it. when you focus on him and remember he's worthy, then it does remind you that any any sacrifice that we do, any service, any, you know, commitment that we have, mm -hmm. it's worthy of him. And so one of the ideas I wanted to talk through as well was there's this repeated phrase um, in the New Testament, and the song reminded me of this, the concept of walking worthy of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So there's four or five times, um, I'll just read a few. So Philippians 1.27 says, Conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Colossians 1 says, uh, he's, Paul's praying, he says, We ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord, pleasing him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God. Uh, and then Ephesians 4, 1 says, Paul's writing, as a prisoner for the Lord, I urge you to live a life 
worthy of the calling you have received. Mm -hmm. So walking worthy of the Lord, worthy of the calling, worthy of the gospel, there's this idea of because of what Jesus did for us, because he is worthy, mm -hmm. because of his death, resurrection, because of the amazing, great salvation we have, your life, you should walk worthy of that. It should, yeah. it's, I think of almost like a counter weight or something. Yeah. Not that we can ever like match what Jesus did for us. But it does straighten us up yeah. a little bit. A couple of things are coming to mind. Mm -hmm. We all, I, we all identify ourselves with something. Mm -hmm. A lot of us, it can be our family. I know my cousin Ryan and I, I mentioned her a lot because we grew up together a lot. But in our early 20s, we, you know, as we would talk through some struggles or something, one of the things we would say is, you are Corky Harmon's granddaughter. And that, and that was one way that yeah. we would like empower. I'd right. be like, you are Corky Harmon's granddaughter. You yeah. get in there. You can do it. You know, um, so and then I, I'm planning my 30 year class reunion of the oh, Ponca yeah. City Wildcats. So I'm a Wildcat. I'm a Ponca City Wildcat. Oh, Wildcats. So when I'm with those friends and those yeah. kids, like we identify ourselves, it makes us walk a little different. Yeah. You know, when I remind myself I'm Corky Harmon's granddaughter and, and I'm loved and can whatever. So it's when we do that with the Savior, with yeah. the Messiah, I identify as a follower of Jesus. Yeah. That makes us walk a little different. Yeah. That and and it's not like walk a little bit arrogant. That's not no. the point. It's not like I'm a daughter of the king and so I get to do what I want. Yeah. It is I am humbled to dust yeah. that I get to align myself with that. The beautiful part of that though is when we do that, he blesses. Now, a lot of times at first, it's like if you take in, this is going to be dumb. I'm just going to say it. If you take in, a, if you find a dog roaming, you know, out in the yard or whatever, and you get him and he's got fleas and yeah. and whatever, you're yeah. going to take him in. You're going to wash him up. Mm -hmm. At first, that's going to be pretty uncomfortable yeah. because you're going to have to take a bath. That dog is not going to really enjoy all of whatever, right? Yeah. But then you take care of him. You've tended. You've straightened him up. Yeah. You've corrected, you've rebuked, you've yeah. trained, you've, yeah. you know, you've preached, you've, you've, you've tended yeah. to. And a lot of times when we first turn to Christ, there is some tending to that yeah. has to happen. There's some correction. There is some, yeah. some redirection that we need mm -hmm. to do. But then on the other side of that, you are a clean puppy with a full belly and you have got a good place to sleep. Yeah. And when you're playing in the yard, your master is there with you. I don't mean to liken us all to dogs, but <laughs> that was the image that was coming to mind. I'm just saying sometimes yeah. it's a little bit uncomfortable at first, yeah. but then it is, I am chosen yeah. and I'm loved yeah. and I identify with Christ, not out of a duty yeah. or out of an obligation, but out of an awe. Yeah. And out of a joy that yeah. comes from aligning to him. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah, it's, it's remembering all like the Psalm 40 verse. He, he picked me out of the mud. Yeah. <laughs> the mud and the mire. Um, I'm not sure uh, what mire is actually. We'll have to what look is that mud up. and mire. Maybe I'll put a definition in the description. Okay. <laughs> what is mire? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it's remembering what he did and and what he continues to do. Mm -hmm. He still corrects us. He still, right. you know, has to rebuke us at times. Um, but again, going back to that idea of he's 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 worthy of it. There's mm -hmm. things I have to still learn, and there's things I need to let go of. There's things yeah. I need to heal from, move past, you know, be corrected, whatever it is. Yeah. And that's still ongoing. So it, it is remembering that. You know he's worthy of all of our our service and 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 praying and forgiving and planning yeah. and preparing and serving and all this stuff because of what he's done, but because of what he's still doing in and through us. Who else is worthy? That's it. Somebody else will do that much better justice. But I think what you just said is really good. That was one of the things I kind of mentioned when we were in focus. Mm -hmm. Is if that's the case. When we settle that there's no one else 
yeah. that is ever going to be worthy enough for us to forgive, for us to redirect course, if if Jesus alone is worthy, then part of the challenge was make a list of the things you'll be better at yeah. if Jesus becomes your motivation to do that well. Yeah. You know, if you're if if Jesus is your motivation to be the best husband you can be to to Kristen, um, then you won't switch gears on a day that Kristen may not be feeling her best, and you're like, mm-hmm. "Well, I'm not going to get her coffee this morning because she was a little snippy, or whatever the case is." I don't know. I'm just making that up. That's not a real life story, but I'm oh, that's saying, a real life. Situation. Okay, okay. <laughs> more than you know, <laughs> there's a morning debate every morning. Who's getting the coffee? <laughs> Okay, well, maybe I'm, yeah, I knew that somehow. I don't know. But I'm just saying, like, for us to make a list, what relationships, how, you know, what yeah. what roles do we play in our yeah. lives um, that if Jesus is the center of that, if he is worthy of us being our kindest, being our best, being our most patient, being, you know, giving our best effort, then what relationships, what situations will we do better and differently what might we straighten up a little bit yeah. um because jesus is the center of it yeah i love that i want to share another verse okay. on that idea colossians 3 talks about uh whatever you do work at it with all your heart as working for the lord not for human masters since you know you will receive an inheritance from the lord as a reward it is the lord christ you are serving and so there in the con- in the context of work Saying it says two things: work as if you're working for the Lord, and then it says actually when you work, it's actually the Lord you're serving. Yeah, and so it's a way of kind of reframing like why why am I doing all this? What is my right. role here in my job? Whatever the job is, yeah, you know, my role as a parent, as you know, as a spouse, as a friend, as a daughter, mm-hmm. like is it. Is it just about this human relationship? I think scripture would say no. Right. We're an ambassador. We're we're reflecting him. And yeah. in those things, we're actually serving him. Yeah. That concept of what you've done for the least of these, you've done it to me. Right. And so how we how we work, how we treat others, it's as if we're doing it to the Lord. Yeah. As you think about the various roles in your life, what how would that change if your if your motivation was focused on Jesus right. and not and not the money that the job gives you or the you know or the or even the good things even the joy the relationship brings you which yeah. is a good result of any relationship but it really i think at the core of that it's freedom yeah it's freedom like we live and work and breathe because God has blessed us to do that and when i'm tied to you know, a boss or a situation or, um, you know, we give things and other people lordship of our lives when we allow them to be the one that is able to change our emotions and route us around. And yeah. But freedom in Christ is when he's the center of it all, then it just doesn't, uh, yeah. it's not that it never matters, but it just doesn't have the yeah. king seat in our yeah. life. It you doesn't know? have a grip on us. Yeah. As we said, we can we can discuss conflict. We can we can we can represent ourselves. It's not like we become doormats and never um, you know, try to have impact on things that are going wrong or, yeah. you know, whatever. We 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 get to be a part of all those conversations, but we're set free of other people controlling us. Yeah. You know, we're just set free of that. Yeah. And then again in order so that we can walk in a manner worthy of yeah. the Lord. And and we had talked through a little bit before about, you know, not just avoiding sin and kind of not getting into trouble, but mm-hmm. walking worthy of the Lord so that we can actually actively pursue God and the plans he has for us and, and fulfill the calling he has for yeah. us. Because what does the world say, Dustin? The world looks at... Those of us who are Christians, they want to look at us, see our walk, yep. and it, and it, and the world is just waiting for an opportunity to be like hypocrite or jerk or, you know, like <laughs> yeah. um, it, when we 
when we do with our mouths or say with our mouths what we don't do with our actions, that's a role that nobody can keep up. Unfortunately, that's why we see so many in the church fall and fail, um, I think, just because some expectations get built up of we have to have all of this and we have to, yeah. you know, have this many members and we got to grow the church and we got to whatever. Yeah. And and really, I think just peeling all of that down to just us and Jesus, magnifying his name, yeah. where does he lead us? In my life, he's following him and surrendering those moments and coming to some of those hard decision points. Mm-hmm. It's always led to better than I expected. Yeah. You know, not answering all of my prayers, not leading to all the places that I wanted to lead. Yeah. But better than I expected. And yeah. I'm very grateful for the concept and the idea that it can be as simple as doing what I do for Jesus. Yeah. It can be as simple as he is my motivation. Yeah. And I fail at that a lot. You know, I, there are absolutely, most of the times it's attitude failures. Most of the time it's, it's you know, so it's not that, as Paul said, I guess, you know, it's not that I've attained all of that, but I yeah. do choose to strive for it at yeah. least. And yeah. that brings me a lot of peace. It's not like, oh, I'm super yeah. smarty smart but mm-hmm. that is what brings me peace and what i feel fulfills me yeah it makes me think of um what lee strobel shared with us uh he talked about i forget the missionary's name um but he had said on his deathbed to lee louis palau yeah mm-hmm. yeah uh you'll never regret being courageous for christ yeah um and i think that carries that idea because Jesus is worthy of it. Mm -hmm. So I think of like, when I think of walking in a manner worthy of the Lord, I do think of those big things, missionaries going around the world, translating scripture, like think of like the saints who were martyred and all these Mm -hmm. things, just worthy of the Lord. But I also think the way it plays out just on a daily basis, the praying for a friend Mm -hmm. worthy of the Lord, encouraging someone with a kind word worthy of the lord yeah serving having you know adjusting your attitude to you know be humble be gentle whatever like (laughs) guarding our mouths in moments where there's conflict um Mm -hmm. all of these things even just the just the daily practice of gratitude Mm -hmm. worthy of the lord yeah and so i think this song and that concept of walking in a manner worthy of the lord it's a way of just kind of cutting through a lot of clutter in our minds and just asking just looking at my time looking at how i spend my 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 time my money my you know my energy asking is this worthy of the lord yeah i think it's a it's a one of those simple questions of just like it's like the what would jesus do kind of question of just yeah. kind, of, kind of it's a way of centering you centering us and just cutting through a lot of the clutter and going is this decision worthy of the Lord? Is this activity? Is this time? Is this right. all these things? And I mean, Jesus hung out with his buddies. Yeah. You know, he went to weddings. He he had he went out for dinner with his yeah. friends. Like, I think sometimes when we think of that, like, is this worthy of the Lord? Well, go into your 30 year reunion and seeing kids that you grew up with, that's yeah. a good thing. Like yeah. he put us in this in this world to populate the earth, yeah. to, you know, yeah. do good work of our hands, to farm the land, to, mm-hmm. you know, build houses and fill them up. Yeah. And um, so I think looking at what God created is a big hint yeah. of what he wants us to be about. When we talk about, you know, not being of the world or worshiping the world, it's not the world itself. Yeah. It is the distractions yeah. of what the world could be yeah. and was made to be. Yeah. So it's like enjoy what yeah. he's given you. Enjoy your family. Yeah. Enjoy your friends. Go to the concert. Yeah. You know, um embrace the life yeah. that he's given us because I think we see that in Jesus's life. Yeah. In being friends. And I mean even stepping away from his ministry to go to 
um, to Bethany and be with Lazarus and Mary and Martha that were like, he had the apostles, but then he also had those friends that he went and spent time with when he needed to rest. And so I think like, it doesn't mean over spiritualize it. Yeah. Um, we don't put ourselves in a white padded room so that there's nothing that, but it is, what are you pursuing what are you driven to be about? Yeah. And is God hearing your song of praise out of all of creation? Yeah. You know, is and he you're, hearing you're, you? Yeah. It's such a joy. And I'm sorry to come back to the dog, <laughs> but I'm coming back to the dog. Is this going to be your key takeaway? Well, because I, I, I like the little dog videos on Instagram and and the dog videos that they're like. For rescue. Yeah. After they're like, this is what he looked like before. And then they oh, show yeah. a picture in the car with the kids and the dog is literally smiling his face off. That's what it feels like yeah. to get restored to God and get in relationship yeah. with Jesus. It's like, I'm finally home. And there is a, there's a joy and a smile and um, a beautiful yeah. life in that. But sometimes you're going to have to take the flea bath before, you know, not that you got to clean yourself up, but he's, there is some reshaping. There is some. Yeah. So I just tell people to persevere yeah. to get to these relationship points with him because he is worthy of it and it's going to be good. Yeah. Yeah. I think my, uh, are we counting that as your key takeaway? I think so. <laughs> okay. That's a key takeaway. <laughs> That's a key takeaway. Yeah. I think mine would be, that concept of Jesus being worthy and asking yourself, you know, if it is a thing you're struggling with or a hard decision you have to make, of mm-hmm. asking yourself, is this worthy of the Lord mm-hmm. or even your daily activities? And yeah, it doesn't have to be a super spiritual thing. Right. Um, it is, uh, it's just something that I think can cut through a lot of the clutter. Yeah. And then to uh, also as well. Good, good w- guardrails. Yeah, yeah. When, when you're singing songs um, at church, in your car, wherever, think through the lyrics, like put scripture to them. Like, yeah. um, I think it's just important, again, to to note that music really can, yes, it, it lifts our spirits and, you know, changes the mood mm-hmm. and can help us focus on Christ. But I think when you when you think through some of the concepts in it, how does it relate to scripture and bringing it back to God's word? Yeah. And I think that's what I loved about this song was that it brought to mind so many different concepts. And so it's beautiful. I was happy to talk yeah. through that with you today. Yeah, me too. Kudos to gateway worship and um, just use your gifts. And if, yeah. if, if you're a descendant of Jubal, I know, I said it, but I can't get over it. And to do one more call back to Jubal. Sing it, write it, play it, because I'm going to listen to it in my car and sing it really loud. All right. Well, thank you for this discussion and for leading us during our devotional times. And I'll put scripture references, all the things in the description. I'll put the uh, song as well in the description so everyone listening can listen to that as well Mm -hmm. and have a little moment of praise. So Haley, would you mind closing us out in prayer? I'd love to. I'd love to. Father, just thank you so much. Thank you for music. Thank you for that being one way that we can worship you, how you are glorified Thank you for the talent and the giftings that you give people that create that. And thank you, God, how you connect with our hearts in those things. I just, um, I'm so grateful that music was part of your plan and that songs were part of your uh, creation, God. And I pray for those that are listening, Lord, that they would consider if their song of praise is loud enough for you to hear. And if they would kind of ramp up the volume a little bit on what their praise is and maybe go back and do a timeline of praise. But where are the praise points, God? I pray that you would bring that to mind, even if just one, if there's just one praise point, whatever is true and lovely and worthy of praise, God, I pray that you would begin to spark a fire in them that would grow into a full-blown song. Jesus, you are worthy. You are good. You did good, and you are for us, not against us, and you redeem us, and we are grateful. Thank you for allowing this to be a part of our work. Thank you for allowing us to speak your hope and your praise. We love you, and you alone are worthy.
And it's in your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks for listening. Be sure to subscribe to Hope Talks and follow along each week. We'd also love for you to leave a rating and review. This will help others more easily find the podcast. Thanks for your support and tune in next week.